Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer. We are on your second day of the MAPS Anabolic Program. Now this day is unique because you don't necessarily need to be inside a gym. All you need is some bands or body weight to do all these movements. But make sure you stay in all the way to the end of the video because Sal is gonna break down the science of why we've put these inside your program. These are our trigger sessions. Now, these are unique to the program. Nobody else has these in their program. You may have heard some people talk about these like anabolic enhancers, but you'll see how Sal breaks these down, why we chose these exercises, also how much of it you should do. Something that I wanna tell you guys before you get into it, I think the most common mistake that I see people do when we teach them trigger sessions is they still have that mentality of going into it and pushing really hard. This is designed more to facilitate recovery in your body and just send a signal that you still wanna build muscle. We are not trying to break down. We're not trying to destroy this workout. You're just chasing a little bit of a pump. Sal will break down the time and the reps at the end of this video. Make sure you hang in there, watch all the way to the end. All right, so for your first exercise in your trigger session workout, it's body weight lunges. Now you're watching Paul do these walking lunges. If you don't have space to walk around and do these, you can do them stationary, you can do them forward step and back step. Remember the intensity is low with trigger sessions. All you're trying to do is send a small muscle building signal to amplify the big one you sent the day before with the harder workouts. That's right. Make sure you guys hang around till the end of the video because in the end of the video, Sal is going to wrap up everything as far as the reps, how much you should do this, the intensity level because this is this is our trigger sessions. This is not like your foundational workout. We are not trying to get the body sore from this workout. Coming up next is band chest flies. All right. We're on to you guys' the second exercise for your trigger workout right here. This is the band chest fly now he's just attaching the band around a stationary object and using this like you would with a dumbbell fly he's using a split stance because that gives him better uh, control and posture again the intensity is low the goal is to get a little bit of a pump and to feel a little bit of a burn this exercise does work the chest and the, all these movements can be done at home they can be done with a rubber band kit those of you that don't know it we provide that on our website by rubber bandits you guys could check that out there and it comes with a nice door handle where you can hook it up on any of your doors in your house and nice handles so we're not even using the handles here because they're not necessary but we do provide those with those kits excellent coming up next band rows all right, the next exercise in your trigger session is a band row. Again, use the band around an anchor point. You can use a doorway. You can use a cage if you have a cage. A lot of bands come with kits that allow you to attach them in the doorway. And you're just going to do a traditional row. You're going to pull back with the hands, squeezing the shoulders back, feeling the mid-back working as you do this exercise. Key here is Paul Rose here. He keeps his elbows grazing by his side, so you can almost feel your elbows graze your rib cage to come in, squeezing the shoulder blades back by your side keeping that nice fixed position in his hips. Coming up next are band lateral raises. All right, we are on to your fourth movement of your guys' trigger sessions. This is the lateral raise right here. Right, and this is done with bands. So you want to step on the band with your front foot, lift out to the sides with both hands. Pretty uh, straightforward. Good tempo, good form. Feel the shoulders burn a little bit. Remember, the intensity is low. So you're just trying to get a good pump with this particular movement. Should not be a lot of resistance. So we recommend the lighter band right here, the orange band. While you do this, you don't. The most common mistake I see is people going too hard and shrugging their shoulders as they do the lateral raise. That's right. Coming up next, band curls. All right, Sal. We are now on to the band curls for this tricep trigger session. That's right. Or bicep. Excuse me. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, so you want to curl the bands up like you would with dumbbells you're just using bands you want to step on the middle of the band you want to keep your elbows at your side as you curl the weight up squeeze the biceps get full extension very basic straightforward movement much easier than saying it right adam <laughs> that's right for those of you guys that want more detail in a movement like this we have plenty of exercise or plenty of videos on the youtube channel that dive deeper into all the different bicep exercises Moving up to the next movement, band tricep press downs. All right, so you want to take your band and anchor it at a high point. You can use the top of your door. Your bands should have an attachment. We're using here the pull-up portion of the cage. You want to stand in front of the band, both hands on either sides, 
good posture, elbows at your sides, and just extend at the elbows and squeeze the triceps. Right. Most important piece, notice how Paul keeps his elbows in a fixed position right here. That'll keep it out from running into your guys' shoulders and focusing just on the triceps. Resist the band as you come back up, and then in that full extension, flexing at the elbow. Perfect. All right, guys. This is your first trigger session type workout uh, in this week. Now, trigger sessions are really what makes MAPS Anabolic special. They're very different from other kinds of workouts. On most workouts, you go into the workout, and the goal is to really cause a lot of damage to your muscles so that you send that muscle building signal because the body's trying to overcompensate so that next time the same workout doesn't cause the same damage. Trigger sessions are different. We're looking at doing these with low intensity. What you're trying to do with trigger sessions is get a little bit of a pump, get a little bit of a burn in the muscle, but you're not trying to create further damage. So you may be wondering, why waste my time at all? What's that gonna do for me? Well, I noticed a long time ago that people who had professions that included lots of repetitive motions, for example, mail carriers uh, or plumbers or uh, you know mechanics, they all had muscular body parts that corresponded to their activity. For example, I have a family member that's a plumber, has been doing it for 30 years, and he's got the most muscular forearms. Now, he's definitely not breaking muscle down at this point. He's been doing it for 30 years every time he does you know, work with his hands. Yet his muscles are massive. And that's because all movement sends a small muscle building signal, and we can target it if you do it the right way. The other thing that it does is, yesterday when you did that foundational workout, which sent the big muscle building signal, our goal today is both to facilitate recovery, which movement does. You don't want to just lay around and think you're going to recover faster because you won't. And the second thing is, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that muscle building signal and we're trying to continue keeping it up. We're trying to pop it up throughout the week so that when you are ready for your next heavy foundational workout, uh, you'll be recovered, but that muscle building signal will already be loud. When you combine trigger sessions with your traditional workout sessions, or what we like to call foundational workouts, you'll see dramatic amplifications in both muscle growth recovery and fat loss. I'm not making this up here, it's completely true. They make a big difference. In fact, you have other fitness professionals calling them different things. We just call them trigger sessions. I'm not sure if we invented them, but I do know that they are extremely effective. So let's talk about the ones you did today. Today you did body weight lunges, band flies, band rows, band laterals, band curls, and band tricep press down. Now you may be wondering why we're using so many bands. Like why not just use weights? There's a couple reasons. For, for one, trigger sessions are best done frequently throughout the day. So today's trigger session is one for the day. You're best off if you do another one throughout the day or even a third one. Uh, people have seen traumatic results from doing three trigger sessions in a day. Now the to total trigger session will last you maybe a grand total of you know, eight to maybe uh, 10 minutes max. When you're doing these trigger sessions, you wanna aim for anywhere between 12 to 14 reps, but really the goal is to get a little bit of a pump and to do kind of a quick workout, get things moving. You do one in the morning, maybe one in the afternoon, and one in the evening, or if your time is limited, one in the morning and one in the evening. The reason why we pick bands, they don't damage muscle as much as weights do. So you can do more work with bands than you can do with weights. That's not good for foundational workouts, but it's perfect for trigger sessions. Plus, super convenient, you can do these anywhere, in your office or at home. The goal is to do this entire cycle, maybe two or three times, should take you about eight to 10 minutes, and then later on the day, repeat it again. Tomorrow, another foundational workout. Look, share this video with your friends, comment below if you have questions, and if you're interested in finding out more about MAPS Anabolic, and the other workouts and phases that are included in it, just go to mindpumpmedia.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.